Welcome to this edition of SAU Magazine, a weekly program featuring news, profiles, sports, commentary, interviews, and special events, all coming to you from the campus of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. This is the Southern Arkansas University News Brief. I'm Jamie Giddens. And I'm Tamika Gully. Two SAU students will spend the fall semester at Disney World. Junior broadcast journalism major Dana Thomas and theater major Matt Gatlin, also a junior, were selected by recruiters from Disney World to intern at the park for the entire fall 1999 semester. According to Gatlin, he and Thomas will leave for Orlando, Florida, somewhere around August 27th, for their four-month stint as merchandising hosts. They will be paid $5.85 per hour and will work an average of 30 hours weekly. They, along with the other interns selected, will live at the park's Fistaway apartments and will divide their time between classwork for college credit and their jobs. Both Thomas and Gatlin say they are very excited about their upcoming experience. In other news, a series of tornadoes swept through the Arklatex on Tuesday, May 4th, destroying much of the town of DeKalb, Texas, 38 miles from Texarkana. According to KTBS 3 First News, the tornado's devastating effect was felt for a 100-mile stretch from Oklahoma to Louisiana. A resident of New Boston, Texas, which is 12 miles east of DeKalb, Kenneth Betts, says that the high school, middle school, and elementary school were all seriously damaged. According to KBS, Texas governor and possible Republican presidential candidate George W. Bush was scheduled to visit the town on Wednesday, May 5th. SAU student Samuel C. Brewer was killed on Wednesday, April 28th in Bradley, Arkansas. According to the Arkansas State Police, Brewer failed to stop at a stop sign at the intersection of Arkansas Highways 160 and 29. According to the State Police, Brewer was traveling westbound in a 1995 Ford Ranger at approximately 12.04 p.m. when his brakes locked, causing the truck to slide through the intersection, hitting a CTS Enterprises tractor trailer rig driven by Joseph Dunaway. Dunaway walked away unharmed. This has been a Southern Arkansas University News Brief. I'm Jamie Giddens. And I'm Tamika Gully. With SAU Sports, I'm Jennifer Lewis. And I'm Tracy Campbell. Kel Clopton, offensive tackle for the Mule Riders, has signed a free agent contract with the New Orleans Saints, according to the Banner News. Clopton, a senior from Emory, Texas, was All-South Region and third-team All-American for the Mule Riders. The Mule Riders went 8-2 last season and 9-2 in 1997 to earn a co-GSC championship. A two-person scramble intramural golf tournament began on April 28th and will end on May 7th. The first nine holes of the 27-hole tournament was played on April 28th through the 30th. The final 18 holes will be played this week. During the summer, SAU will host two volleyball camps. On June 7th through the 9th, SAU will host a three-day volleyball skills camp. On July 5th through the 9th, five-day volleyball skills camp will also be held. A four-person reverse co-ed volleyball tournament will be held on May 1st. On July 11th through the 15th, the 29th annual SAU basketball camp for girls will be held on the SAU campus. Area high school athletes will work on fundamentals during the mornings, compete with other campers in the afternoons, and play in five-on-five scrimmages in the evenings. The SAU men's and women's track teams competed in an event on April 24th in Monroe, Louisiana. In the men's event, Dwayne Defee and Alan Reyes placed 4th and 5th respectively in the 5,000 meter. Defee had a time of 15 minutes, 57.30 seconds, while Reyes finished with a time of 16 minutes, 37.55 seconds. For the women, Jill Fennessy placed 3rd in the 400 meter dash with a time of 57 minutes, .39 seconds. The time was a new SAU record in that event. Fennessy set the previous record of 59.30 seconds earlier in the year. This has been SAU Sports. I'm Heather Quint with Commentary. Southern Arkansas University provides ample academic support for any students who need academic help. The Tutoring Center and the Supplemental Instruction Services are available to students who desire help with their papers, tests, projects, test-taking skills, and basic course comprehension. Unfortunately, SI leaders and tutors find themselves with excessive time on their hands. 
A great majority of students need extra help in their classes, yet few search out the free services offered to them. Professors are baffled by this phenomenon as well. One English professor said, how many times do I need to reinforce that going to SIs or the tutoring center will help their grades dramatically? They wait until the last month of the semester to overload their academic aiding peers. Students on the SI or tutoring center payroll often have to cancel sessions because of no-show days. Yet the same students who fail to attend do not pass quizzes and tests on a repeated basis. In order to raise your academic standing, please take responsibility and attend these free sessions. I'm Heather Quint with Commentary. With an SAU Police Log, I'm Dana Thomas. And I'm Lisa Stegall. On April 5th at 9.10 p.m., while on routine patrol, Sergeant Lamb observed a black Camaro driving north on East Lane with the window down and loud music coming from the vehicle. Lamb stopped the vehicle in a parking lot off East Lane and issued the driver, Bruce Carter Jr., a citation to appear for disturbing the peace. At 9.20 p.m. on April 6th, Sergeant Lamb asked Officer Thornton to take a theft report. Upon arrival at the office, Thornton was met by Elizabeth Allen, who reported that the antenna had been taking off her car, a Chevy Camaro. Allen stated that she had last seen the antenna at 12 p.m. She had parked her car in the parking area in front of Peace Hall. Allen noticed the antenna missing at 9.15 p.m. when she was going to eat. On April 10th at 9.05 a.m., a caller stated that Doris Gilbert was on campus between Nelson Hall and the Bruce Center, and he was not supposed to be on campus. She identified him as wearing a yellow shirt and black jeans. After checking for a criminal, criminal trespass warning, Officer Tedder proceeded to the mall area where he observed a male by the kiosk at the Nelson Hall fitting the description given. Tedder approached the subject and asked for some identification. The subject stated that he did not have any ID, but his name was Mark Anthony Gilbert, and Tedder could check it in the computer. An ACIC check showed a current driver's license for Mark Gilbert. When in asked, he could not provide a driver's license or social security number, and he did not know his address. He also stated that he did not know Doris Anthony Gilbert and was not related to him. With further questioning, he said he lived on Harper Street but did not know the number. Tedder took Gilbert to Magnolia PD and told him that if he could provide a picture ID, he would not charge Gilbert for loitering. With an SAU police log, I'm Dana Thomas. And I'm Lisa Stegall. With entertainment news, I'm Kezi Rudd. And I'm Tina Davis. A song and dance tale of deceit, murder, and the all-conquering power of love. These were just a few of the elements found in the SAU Theater Department's presentation of The Robber Bridegroom last week. In the play, the citizens of the fictional town of Rodney sing and dance telling stories of ancestors like the characters of Musgrove, played by veteran SAU performer Philip Smith, after riding into town. Musgrove decides to stay the night at a local inn, Though he is wary, someone may attempt to steal his sack of money. During the night, these posing as weary travelers, Little Heart, played by John Ford, and his, wave, his raven, Buthoni Imperia, and Jamie, played by Josh Duncanson, decide to stop at the inn for the night. Jamie saves Musgrove's life from Little Heart, who believes he has killed both of them. Grateful to be alive, Musgrove rewards Jamie by offering his most prized possession. No, not his huge plantation or his millions of dollars, but the hand of his beautiful young daughter, Rosamond, played by Tanya Andrews. When Musgrove returns home, he recounts how he narrowly escaped death with the help of a nice, handsome young man to whom Rosamond shall wed. Salam, Haley Phillips, Musgrove's hateful second wife who has been plotting ways to get rid of Rosamond so that she would be the sole heir to his wealth, is stupefied over what Musgrove said. She sends Rosamond Steele, wearing the expensive blue dress her father bought for her, out to pick herbs in the densest part of the woods, hoping a panther might kill her. It turns out the panther was the least of Rosamond's worries. If you missed The Robber Bridegroom, then you missed one of the SAU's department's best performances. I'm Tina Davis. And I'm Kezi Rudd.
SAU broadcast journalism students produce informative television programs for viewers in Southwest Arkansas. The SAU report features interviews with faculty, staff, students, and alumni. It is seen each week in Magnolia on TCA Cable Channel 13. Camden residents can see the SAU report each morning on Cable Channel 16. Tens of thousands of cable television households in southwest Arkansas watch the program on KTSS-TV Channel 55 in Hope. The SAU report not only serves as a learning tool for broadcast journalism students, but serves to inform the region about institutional events and personalities. Some editions of SAU Magazine feature audio segments from these television programs. Be sure and watch the SAU report on your local cable television service. Informative viewing, provocative subject matter. The SAU Report. I'm Lisa Stegall. And I'm Dana Thomas. With us today is re retiring faculty member Calvin Neal. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's, what's your educational background and when did, you, when did you come to SAU? I was uh, in high school at Clarendon High School, which is over in eastern Arkansas, a small school. I came to Magnolia uh, at that time, which was Southern State College, 1955. So you came as a student? Yes. So that is that strange? Then I went to, uh, after that, I, I, I went to East Texas State for a while, and uh, also to Henderson, where I completed uh, my master's. Went to the University of Arkansas and completed my administrative uh, certification requirements. And I've been back here in the graduate program in counseling. What kind of degrees are needed for an education ed major or, um, say, your professor? What kind of degrees do you have to have? Well, a public school teacher uh, will have basically a BSE degree with a major in one area and a specialty area if they're elementary and a supporting field if they're secondary. There, there are other ways that you might get a licensure in Arkansas, which would be having a degree outside of education and then uh, doing a deficiency removal plan meeting state requirements, and you could be licensure that way. So there's more than one way okay. of being licensure. Did you always know that you wanted to teach? No. No, when I first came here, <coughs> like most freshmen, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to major in. <laughs> We came through Emerson, and uh, I saw all those oil wells out there pumping that oil up and down. I decided I was going to get me some of that black stuff, so I majored in geology and, uh, for a little while and eventually changed into education. Well, where are you from? Where have you lived? I mean, how did you get to uh, SAU? Well, I've lived in Clarendon, Arkansas most of my life, and um, we moved to Oregon for half a year when I was in ninth grade. <clears throat> and then I've lived here in Magnolia, uh, Cooks, Texas, uh, Texarkana, not Texarkana, I'm sorry, Arkadelphia, and then back to Magnolia. So what made you come back to Magnolia? Job opportunity. <laughs> uh, I was high school principal at Arkadelphia and uh, Coach Auburn Smith came by and offered me a coaching job. I was coaching and being an administrator. Uh, I thought it'd be neat to coach at the college level, so I came here. Have you enjoyed coaching? Did you enjoy it after you got here? I enjoy coaching, yes. Now, <clears throat> I coached about 10 years at the college level and uh, six years at the uh, uh, high school. SAU Magazine is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.